Good morning. Please stand and join in singing number 405. Welcome. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Welcome everyone on a very cold, wintry day, but of course it's a, joy, a, joy, a day made joyful, joyful uh, for our presence today. And this weekend is also our Christmas boutique weekend. So downstairs, we've had many people hard at work. Uh, Mary and a lot of the women over here and men have been working hard to prepare the Christmas boutique, which will be available after Mass if you want to go downstairs and get a good deal. I got a lot of Christmas cards last night, 10 cents a card. So very nice. I'll sell them to you for 15 cents, though. <laughs> but it's a wonderful uh, ministry, a wonderful care of our parish. And this morning as we come together, we celebrate this Mass in the loving memory of Francis X. Herman Jr. and Rosella Messenbrink. So we hold them in our prayers. And so as we come together to encounter Christ in the Scriptures and in the breaking of the bread, let us take a moment to call to mind our own lives and trust in the mercy of God. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A 
reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On that day, a shoot shall sprout from the stump of Jesse, and from his roots a bud shall blossom. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, a spirit of wisdom and of understanding, a spirit of counsel and of strength, a spirit of knowledge and of fear of the Lord, and his delight shall be the fear of the Lord. Not by appearance shall he judge, nor by hearsay shall he decide, but he shall judge the poor with justice and decide a right for the lands afflicted. He shall strike the ruthless with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Justice shall bend around his waist, and faithfulness a belt upon his hips. Then the wealth, the wolf shall be a guest of the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the young lion shall browse together with a little child to guide them. The cow and bear shall be neighbors. Together their young shall rest. A lion shall eat hay like the ox. The baby shall play by the cobra's den, and the child lay his hand on the adder's lair. There shall be no harm or ruin on all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as water covers the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse set up as a signal for the nations, the Gentiles shall seek out, for his dwelling shall be glorious. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Justice, justice shall flourish in his time, and fullness of peace forever. Justice, justice shall flourish in his time, and fullness of peace forever. Give your judgment to the king, to a king's son, your justice, that he may judge your people in justice and your poor in right judgment. Justice, justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever. day shall justice flourish, and great peace shall move the moon is no more. He shall roar from sea to sea, from the river to the bounds of the earth. Justice and justice shall flourish in his name, and fullness of peace forever. For the needy, for he shall save the needy when they cry, the poor and those who are helpless. He will have pity on the weak and the needy and save the lives of the needy. Justice, justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever. May his name endure forever, his name continue like the sun. Every tribe shall be blessed in him. All nations shall call him blessed. Justice, justice shall flourish in his time. And 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, whatever was written previously was written for our instruction, that by endurance and by the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to think in harmony with one another, in keeping with Christ Jesus, that with one accord, you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another, then, as Christ welcomed you, for the glory of God. For I say that Christ became a minister of the circumcised to show God's truthfulness, to confirm the promises to the patriarchs, so that the Gentiles may glory God for his mercy, as it is written, Therefore, I will praise you among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. salvation of God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. John the Baptist appeared preaching in the desert of Judea, and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It was of him that the prophet Isaiah had spoken when he said, A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John wore clothing made of camel's hair and had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey, at that time, Jerusalem, all Judea, and the whole region around the Jordan were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. When he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce good fruit as evidence of your repentance, and do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God can raise up children to Abraham from these stones. Even now the axe lies at the root of the trees. Therefore every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire." I am baptizing you with water for repentance, but the one who is coming after me is mightier than I. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand. He will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into his barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we encounter John the Baptist in our readings, and John the Baptist always uh, arrives early in our Advent season. And I remember when I was a kid, I used to think that John the Baptist was a Texan. And 
I didn't think this because he wore strange clothing or ate strange foods or because he lived in the desert. I thought this because it says that he's John the Baptist. And the only Baptists I knew were my grandparents and cousins, and all of them lived in Texas. So by the logical you know, relationship, oh, he must be a Texan since he's a Baptist. But alas, he is not a Baptist. He was not referring to his denomination. We call him the Baptist or the baptizer because he baptized people in the Jordan. And it's amazing in our gospel because it says that the people from Jerusalem and Judea and from the whole region are coming to, to John to be baptized. His fame is well known. And even the Pharisees and the Sadducees go to be baptized by him. And it's surprising to me because he's such a strange figure. He's this kind of odd person. But also, he's calling people not just to be baptized, but he's telling them to repent, that they should repent of their ways. And I don't know about you, but that doesn't always go. If, I, if someone were to tell me to repent, I wouldn't take it very kindly. And if we all decided to go out to Lake Street after Mass today and to walk and tell everyone that we meet, oh, you need to repent, I'm not sure it would go well for us. And yet repentance is one of those things that is also closely connected to our Christmas season, to our Advent season. And in fact, it's such a central part of it that it's often a part of our Christmas stories, of our Christmas traditions, not just in the scriptures, but even in our Christmas movies and music and stories. One of my favorite stories is about this village out in the countryside somewhere. And this village is preparing for Christmas. And so everyone is busy making presents and decorating their houses and and getting ready for the big day. But there's a, a hermit or a stranger that lives outside the city by himself, and he hates Christmas. And he hates how the people in the town are celebrating and getting ready. And he gets more and more frustrated with them. And so finally he he thinks of a plan. And the night of Christmas Eve, he sneaks into the town. And he goes into each person's house. And he steals all of the presents that they had prepared. All the presents that were under the tree. And he's able to do this on all the houses. And so the next morning, the people of the village wake up and their presents are gone, their toys are gone. And the the man is so happy with what he'd done and he was so ready for them to get, uh, you know, upset. And he's actually about to destroy all of the presents that people had, all of the gifts they had made. When all of a sudden he hears in the distance the people of the town singing a Christmas song. And he realizes that they're still joyful, even though all the presents are gone. That they're still able to celebrate, even without all of the material things. And hearing the people sing, it makes his heart grow three times larger. I'm talking about how the Grinch stole Christmas, in case you didn't know. But I love the story because this is a story of repentance by the Grinch. It's this moment when he hears the people singing, when he hears their joy, that his heart grows, that he repents of what he was going to do, and he gives the presents back to the people, and there's a happy ending. I love this story, and it's one of repentance, and I think it gets to the real meaning of repentance. Repentance doesn't mean that we're telling people that they're awful, that we're telling ourselves that we're terrible people. That's not what repentance is. The root or the original word used in the scripture for the word repentance is a Greek word called metanoia. And metanoia literally means to meta, to change your noia, your mind. It's a change or a transformation of our minds that allows us to see in a different light, that allows us to Uh, understand something in a deeper way. And this metanoia, this repentance, is something that we're called to as Christians, not just during Christmas, 
but throughout our lives continually. And in a deeper sense, in the Christian view of metanoia, it really means moving from darkness into light, to deeper understanding. And I think it's this sense of metanoia that we're called to this Christmas season, to see in our world, to see in our lives the places that are touched by darkness, and then coming to God and being transformed in our minds, being able to see how even in the darkness the light is present. And like the Grinch, I think each of us needs to, uh, the only way that we can be changed, can be transformed, is when we encounter truly joy, when we encounter the joy of God. And this joy of God is, of course, communicated through God's love for us. In our first reading, and our, our gospel refer to John the Baptist as the one preparing the way for the Lord, of making level the roads. And this is a way of saying, make it easier for people to know God in our world. Make it easier for God to come into our lives. And we do this by caring for one another, by truly being merciful and compassionate, by being willing to forgive and be patient with one another, even with ourselves. And it's by making straight the paths of the Lord, by letting people know the love of God, that we begin to experience the presence of God, which is where joy overflows. In the Gospel, John the Baptist is so angry at the Pharisees and the Sadducees because they're coming to be baptized, but they have no desire to repent. They have no desire to change. They still want to have the same power, the same leadership, the same control over the people. And John the Baptist is calling them to let go, to be merciful, and to help make straight the paths of the Lord. And so for each of us in our own lives, we're called to do the same, to make straight the paths of the Lord, to be transformed by our minds which only comes from the love of God. And this love, of course, is manifested in our care for one another, in our outreach to those who are poor, not just materially, but might be looking for love, looking for meaning, and looking for light. And it's in this way that when we carry out our job, when we do that mercy, when we make known and make straight the paths of the Lord, that we ourselves begin to be transformed, that our heart begins to expand and grow, and that through us we begin to experience that presence of God and that joy, that joy that calls us to that Christmas night when God entered into our world, into our lives, a God bringing that gift of love, bringing that gift of joy, and calling us to our true purpose to our true transformation, to be like God in our world. And now let us stand and profess our faith in the Apostles' Creed, which is in the inside of our worship books. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the very, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And now we offer our prayers and our needs this day. 
we pray that recognizing we are the church and in the spirit of John the Baptist, call hypocrites and the power hungry to account, we pray to the Lord. Lord. That we as members of nations, cities, and neighborhoods work toward a flourishing of justice and nonviolence, we pray to the Lord. That we as followers of Jesus live by his teaching in our lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord. That we as members of this parish accept our ministry as bearers of Christ with joyful spirits, we pray to the Lord. Lord. We hold before God all who have asked for our prayers, including Peter Hamburg, Rita Bach, Pablo Davila, George Brust, Mark Fisher, Mary Gustafson, Michael Callahan, Luke Morin, Doug Bolthus, Christopher Blazewich, along with those who wish their names to be private, we pray to the Lord. For all who have died in the peace of Christ, including Harry Hyduck, and for Francis X. Herman Jr. and Rosella Messenbrink, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord And for the prayers that we carry in the silence of our hearts. And for one another, we pray to the Lord. Lord Loving and merciful God, source of our joy, source of our hope. We bring you these prayers and we ask that you help us always as we walk our path of faith. And we ask this in all things in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Please join in singing number 395.
pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings. And since we have no merit to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the designs you formed long ago and open for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. My Lord, my God. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this 
in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O oh Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Nicholas, Saint Teresa of Avila, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you, in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Gathered together as God's family, we pray in the words of Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And let us offer to one another a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Number 406, wait for the Lord.
Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. As I mentioned at the beginning, our Christmas boutique and bake sale is in full swing downstairs. They will be open till noon. So uh, please uh, make your way down there and peruse the items. There are a lot of wonderful treasures there, uh, a lot of great deals as well. And our giving tree is back in the back of the church with the different ornaments. Uh, so all of the, the gifts and all the ornaments are for our uh, Catholic Charities Minneapolis for those in need. So uh, feel free to pick an ornament and then buy an item. And I believe the deadline, well, it says it on there, but I think the deadline's like December 18th. Okay, so that's the deadline for presents. So uh, please make it by then. Uh, and then today, of course, we had our wonderful choir once again, very beautiful. And you too can be a member of the choir. Uh, all you have to do is show up here uh, at 8.30 on Sunday and uh, they re begin rehearsals. So we'd love to have you join our voices, their voices and they're doing a great job and it's truly beautiful. Um, today also we are joined by Mark Billy, our uh, cantor. And today at three, oh yes, give Mark a hand of applause as well. And today at three, we're hosting a free concert featuring Mark and uh, Karen Wolverton, two of our regular cantors. And this is uh, made possible by a donation from a relative of the late choir member, Joan Klopp. So this is a concert kind of in her memory, but it's free for anyone. So I encourage you to come back at three. Uh, I'm sure the Viking game will be over and the Vikings have already won uh, to have some wonderful music and join us together. If you are a lector, then we have uh, lector books available. Uh, talk to Ed, and he can give you our lector books, which give you some, uh, you know, they give you the readings and some insight and some pronunciation tips and everything. So uh, please talk to Ed if you'd like a copy. And then this week, we have two special events. On Tuesday at 11 a.m., we will have our Advent service of reconciliation and anointing of the sick. Uh, so at 11 a.m., we'll gather together for a little brief uh, service, as well as confession and the anointing of the sick. So I hope you can join us on Tuesday. And then Thursday is the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, um, which is a great Marian feast during Christmas. And so we will have Masses at 8.15, our normal time, but also at 5.30 as well. So we hope you can join us for one or both. I'll be at both. So... I hope to see you there. Um, and I'm sure there's more, but that's what the bulletin is. Oh, my Advent wish list is available. Um, so the Advent wish list will be, uh, it's in the bulletin or there's extra copies floating around, so please take a moment. And then some stranger is waving at me, I don't know, with guitar. John. Yes, so on Christmas Eve, we're going to have uh, children join us in singing, uh, providing music for Christmas Eve. And so John, Pulio, and Tom will be coordinating. So uh, if you're interested or your kids are interested, we'll gather uh, right after this Mass uh, in the small chapel. Oh, just right here up front uh, to begin the rehearsal. And then the rehearsals begin uh, next week at 9 th or 10.30 to 11.30. So uh, if you, and was there an age cutoff for the, the choir? Is it 49, 50, or for the kids' choir? <laughs> okay. I think it's K through 8. But we'll take, we'll take high schoolers, too. Uh, other than that, I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you drive safe and have a wonderful evening. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go forth in the joy of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. And let us all also gather and pray our parish family prayer. Loving God, 
You alone are the source of every good gift, of the vast array of the universe, and of the mystery of each precious life. We praise you and we thank you for your great power and your tender, faithful love. Everything we are and everything we have is your gift. And after having created us, you have given us into the keeping of your Son, Jesus Christ. Fill our minds with his truth and our hearts with his love, that in the Holy Spirit we may be bonded together into a community of faith, a parish family, a caring people. In the name and spirit of Jesus, we commit ourselves to be good stewards of the gifts entrusted to us to share our time, our talents, our material gifts as an outward sign of the treasure we hold in Jesus. Amen. Please join in singing number 859.
How's it got up here? Good. It's so nice to be able to kind of like just choose if I play or whatever because they're singing. So. Right Thanks. That's what I wanted to do. Was play play and singing. I was a lot better then. Yeah, oh god. No. I could do one note at a time. I've never tried. Really? Yeah. Saxophone is what I started on. Well, this is the deal. I have an elbow. I'd love to have to use the I would love that. Yeah. I need to, I need it's to in expand. the closet. I need to clean it out. Yeah. It has been used. Okay. You played the oboe, right? I did. Yeah, yeah. But I had a really good oboe that we sold. Oh, right. This was one that I bought just to. Extra. Student models. Yeah. Just three or four times a day. Okay. Because it didn't have the, the ring or whatever of the wooden one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh well. Yeah. So if you'd like it. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be nice. I know. Too. I just I just played native flute with an orchestra been. and like I just saw well, this. Stuff. Yeah. Is it? yeah. It's really not hard, you know. You just have to like be able to vibrate and make a good sound. So, I mean, it's just I don't like So if you were in Oklahoma. <laughs> Yeah, it was, so it was at the first Americans Museum, but it was a gala for the Oklahoma Israeli Exchange. So it was all Jewish people uh, really liked music and have a lot of money. So it was nice. Yeah. The former governor was sitting like right in front of me. Hey, guess what happened this morning? What's his name, Felix? Oh, she's, uh -huh. she's, she's oh after that? That's what I was doing. He might have nudged him. I, that's what I everybody think. knows everybody, so that's what I think. Yeah. Yeah. He's out of here. Okay. I'm just okay. You know, it's like you know. It's funny Facebook listens because after that, I'm not friends with Eli on Facebook, but it suggested him after we were talking about him. This is now weird. <laughs> but he sounds listening. Right? I thought you know, she's going to be here for a little bit about that, right? Okay. Right. And she was saying that that's. Is it the same? What's, what's well, you're seeing the solo on here, so they have a keynote. Oh, great. But it's the same. Yeah. And with those carols. Uh -huh. Yeah. I think we have these few guys will sing them for us. They will sing them for us. Sure. Which we haven't had. Uh, right. So maybe what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. I think so. And Ian and John and those people. Yeah. And they're here. Yeah. That's yeah. what I'm saying. And then you're on a mini guest giving it. So if there's something you want to do with her, we'll probably call it concert. That's great. Don't yeah. ask, just wonderful. Yeah. You know, this is not... <laughs> well, some people, you go somewhere and they have to do it a certain way and only a certain, you know, whatever. Well, it's never been that way. I mean, like, as long as I've been here, it hasn't been long. And I think that the fact that if there's a congregation, yeah. that helps. Yeah, I can just, because, you know, lots of times I'm like, well, I have, I can't do that, play clarinet or something, because I have to, like, lead the, in the verse. So do you play with the orchestra, too? I don't anymore. I haven't up here. I play, I've played in every on, conceivable ensemble you can imagine. Marching band, wind ensemble, orchestra. I really, I was a serious player before I was a singer, and then now I'm a singer. I, well, a different, a, it was a different life. I think yeah, that was maybe, that's a difference, too, right? You know, but I saw that. Looks like Bob is as a master singer. Yeah, yeah. He's right. actually going to London to do a conducting competition in January. I would rather fly to the London tours than conduct. It's just insane. Yeah. I stop. In every moment. But I like the way it makes him think as a pianist because he sort of okay, thinks like I'm an orchestra. Bob O'Gannon. Hmm. He plays the bassoon. Okay. He sang with the same work. He's in the crowd. Okay. But he, we were talking on Friday night and he was talking about how the pianist style, like, I would imagine Bob, they're all the collaborators. Like, they're not just a company of singers. Like this is uh, you can't really even say accompanist anymore. If you say accompanist, it's say like... You can say but what, what I saw him do with you is a different... Oh, yes. If you're playing like the 24 Italian Thompson Arias, yeah, you're yeah. an accompanist. Right, right, but right. if you're playing 
but it's a whole new level of yeah, yeah. collaboration. Is that what it's called? Yeah. But he was looking for the word. Collaborator. Yeah. If you're if you're the pianist is playing with a singer, you're a collaborator. And you're collaborating. Yeah. I was always a pianist. Okay. Well. <laughs> I mean, I don't know anybody that wants to be called an accompanist anymore. It's like you're not supposed to say that word. Yeah. So the there's an added there. Somebody's in the accompanist. See, that might be an accompanist. Well, of course it is. But I was like, they can't get it. I'm just going to say it. That's yeah, dumb. you should. Because I'm free for a day. Yeah, yeah. I know what it's like to not have it. Yeah, to not be able to. Yeah. And if you can't play your sense. Yeah, like some it's terrible. Some teachers. Oh, yeah. We do all the time, Greg. No, that. He's going to be a conductor. Yeah, he is a conductor. I like your class. He's a control. No, control free. Thank you. Thank you. You know, it is so funny. I'm looking at my work. I don't see anybody playing. And then finally, after a while, Oh, there you go. <laughs> he could do that. It sounds really cool. I really, well, that was my instrument. Was it really good? Yeah. Yeah. I love playing. So, uh, so clarinet goes well with singers. It, yeah, yeah, it does. Well. Yeah. 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 I know. I, mean, it, it, I wish I was going to make the range to go have dinner with them off. Oh, the rich way. So, so, and I knew that. Is it going to be strange? Well, this I is didn't like, have a technical difficulty. Okay, they are, but this is the deal too. Like, I know you guys went to school. The deal was this. Whoever tunes their tunes, they get yeah. better work. But it's the people that you did the grant. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that they were from Texas. Okay, so that's Well, I don't know that they don't necessarily have to, but I would like to have them have the opportunity to see sure. because they're pretty, you know, and it's been a while since you make it. Well, no, actually, don't worry, it's cool. Did you get up? I, I, I was did all the checks on her. She, she, that's my baby from her. Well, <laughs> I always try to get those check requests there on Sunday, but I yeah. never saw that. Well, I, I, I usually come in on Thursday. Well, I saw Heidi on Sunday, and anyway. I said, you know, is it all right if I do it after Mass on Sunday? Because, you know, but sometimes we just call it. Yeah, no, we're not going to call it. Are you, are you doing that now? Are you the one? I, well, I'm, gonna, I'm starting to learn it just so we have a backup. Well, who does it? Well, I, 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 I never know. Ron Ringel does it, and yeah. he's been doing it forever. Mm -hmm. And Heidi does, like, he does the payroll for sure. Oh, yeah. He's going to scan the details just so we have a backup for sure. Um, because it's, it's, I need to block Ron, though. Everybody does. Well, Ron, Ron, he knows, but he's, he's like the head of the finance. Okay, so I need to He's been doing that. But Heidi is really the person. Yes, he is the person. But I, but you know, she's got yeah. her mom is in the special society. I used to be a bad guy. No. 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 I used to do it. I used to read the books there in the 90s. Um, that must have been. It was shitty because that was the time when, yeah. when I first started, things had been kind of crazy. And the first, the first six months I worked here, we got bills from, from um, Mini Gasco for the school for six thousand dollars a month. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, they lived in the you know, yeah. yeah. Metropolitan Council or whatever. We got, I got a bill at the building that I sort of worked with. I wasn't trusted. Two years old. I said, "What's this?" Like I knew what it was, but it was something that occurred two years before. Yeah, you know. It's like. And then they're looking to inspect my dishwasher. Well, they put it in two years ago, and I have a building company. Now they're going to inspect it two years later. Yeah. It's almost time for a new one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See you guys good later. to see good you. Good to see you. And it sounded really good. Yeah, it's it's really good. Good. good luck to Seth. Yeah. Yeah. It'll, It'll be really nice. What are you guys doing? So it's mostly opera stuff, um, a big mix. There's every language except Russian. Yeah. Okay, um, except Russian. Yeah. The one I know. The one? The, the, well, well Karen has sucked that. On you again? Yes. Oh, yeah. She's Tatiana. Not, yeah. yeah, her stuff is fine. Yeah. She is like a I even noticed that one that one today was head to head of both with me. So, so absolutely. We were listening, you know, I, I, I listen to this um, we have a group that gets together every other week, like Mike and, mm -hmm. and we listen to these or we listen to these 
person, a couple great persons that they create. Mm -hmm. And so we listen to one and then we talk about it and we listen to two. And we're, we're talking about, there's this guy now that's doing it, it's that music industry, you take a different, um, pretty much world event and then music that went along with it. It's so good. At the same time that the event happened? Yeah, and yeah, explain how they influence each other. That's how far back, back are we going? Well, he's, he's gone back to, um, I mean, mostly from classical stuff, you know, not not, later. not the Middle Ages. It's not not the Middle Ages, I don't think. And he's going to go up into the into the 20th century. But we did some Russian stuff, and I think, uh, you know, he's, he's done, oh, what's his name, the big opera guy. Pavarotti? Uh, no, composer. Oh, Giuseppe Verdi? Verdi, yeah. And, 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 and he was like, sort of dramatical. He was, you know, and, they and, all were, yeah, really. Yeah, but no, I mean, Verdi just how, really, really bad. Just yeah. how, how that stuff was Just the combination. It's a good combo. That's it's really probably why he's my favorite, actually. Yeah, but the Italians were all crazy. Were, 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 how many city states were there? Yeah, Verdi so unified, right. they were all over the place. Mm -hmm. and they still yeah. And now they have well, that's right. They have a new government. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's something. Yeah. So, but it, but it, it's cool to look at it from that point. It is. I, I find that really interesting. But that's really what you have to do if you're studying the history of music. Oh, what was going on? Right. Well, this guy's his name. His name is Greenberg. Is his is his name. Oh, he he did he took this guy down. He was an American guy that was down south. No, 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 but he was like an abolitionist, and, and how his, his music um, yeah, has to be first taught, like, but anyway, like, like yeah. black. But there were abolition songs. Oh, I know, but he, and, and how, and, and, and yeah, that's just cool. Thank you. interesting Spiritual, how, right. how he, how he combined that stuff, some of the black music into his compositions, and, and how it reflected his political yeah. thinking. Basically, those kind of got ousted from the South, you know, right. for a Of course. I can't remember his name now, but, <laughs> but, but, but it was really interesting to learn that stuff. Anyway, I hope you guys have a good to say hi. I will. I will. I want to see if we were on. I don't think we were on. It's, well, it said audio only on Facebook. So oh, yeah. Cool. yeah. <laughs> so here, watch what happens. When I click on uh, rear, uh, that's not going to do anything. It was giving me a message that uh, wasn't connecting. It wasn't connected. And you can see that it's, you got a black screen in here. 